John chapter 19 verses 23 and 24. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his outer garments and made four parts, a part to every soldier, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to decide whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my outer garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5 and 6 But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and viewing audiences, this is the 13th session of the message of the cross and I will tell you about the providence hidden in Jesus' outer garment and tunic. Jesus went through great sufferings and was crucified to redeem the sinners from their sins. When he took the suffering of the cross, he wore the crown of thorns, was whipped, was nailed through his hands and feet, and was pierced in his side. All these things did not occur as coincidence. Each of these things was done by the providence of God. Jesus was laid in a manger to give the food of life to the mankind who are no different from animals. He led a life in poverty to give us richness. He was whipped to redeem us from diseases and wore the crown of thorns to forgive our sins that we commit with our thoughts. Likewise, the processes of Jesus' sufferings were necessary to set us free from the curse caused by the disobedience of Adam and redeem us from our sins. In this session, I will testify to the providence hidden in Jesus' clothes and in Jesus being nailed through his hands and feet. I hope you will more deeply realize the love of the Lord, who with joy took all the sufferings for us. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will become the Lord's beautiful brides who can give up your life for the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, viewing audiences, Jesus was whipped and wore the crown of thorns, so his face and body was covered with blood, and now he had to take the heavy cross. He carried the cross on which he was going to be hung and went up to the Golgotha. When he arrived, the soldiers took off his clothes. Today's passage from John chapter 19 verses 23 to 24 says, When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the earned garment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide, by a lot, who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. When he was hung on the cross, his outer garment and tunic were taken, and he was be hung naked. The one and only Son of God, the Almighty, had to take the shame of being naked before his lowly creatures. The reason why Jesus took the shame was to take away the shame that we had to bear. The innocent Jesus took all the despisement, mockery, and contempt that we sinners had to take. If rotten food 
or excrement is on your clothes and you smell really bad, can you show up in front of many people? You will be so ashamed to show yourself in public until you wipe it out. But sin is even dirtier than the garbage or filth on your clothes. When Adam first committed a sin by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he hid himself from God's face among the trees. Because he had sinned, he felt ashamed before God and tried to hide from God's face. But since all are living in sins as the time goes, people are getting dumber and dumber about sins. Even when they commit sins and do evil, they say everybody does it. Their conscience is getting hardened. Furthermore, it is the last days now, and we are living in a world wickeder than any other time. If the people 30 or 50 years ago see the world of today, they will be so shocked. The sins that used to be considered so abominable before are happening so often nowadays. It is because these shameful things that were not even imaginable before are so prevalent in today's world. But no matter how evil the generation becomes, all the shameful sins will be revealed under the light of God's word. When it is dark, we cannot see that the room is very dirty. But when it is lighted brightly, we can clearly see the filthiness of the room. Likewise, if we reflect our heart on the word of God who is light, we can find out our shameful sins in us. Those who live in sins and evil, being stained by the filth of this world, will be so ashamed when they stand at the judgment of God. Their dirty heart and acts will clearly be revealed, so they will not be able to lift up their hand. But Jesus redeemed us from our sins and the contempt and mockery that we had to take, so that we who believe in this do not have to be ashamed. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21 says, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them to cover the shame of Adam and Eve who were being driven out of the garden due to their sins. God made garments of skin and clothed them. Jesus who came to this earth was hung on the cross naked and redeemed the sinners from their shame. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 18, Jesus advises the church of Laodicea to buy white clothes to wear so they can cover their shameful nakedness. The Lord is warning those who are lukewarm in their faith, professing their faith in God, to sanctify their heart and get ready to receive the Lord. I hope you will be grateful from the depth of your heart for the love of the Lord who took the shame for sinners. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will quickly accomplish the complete sanctification so that you will receive the Lord without any shame. To your brothers and sisters in Christ, the soldiers took Jesus' outer garments and made four parts, or part to every soldier and also the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, even in one piece. So they cast lots for it, and one soldier took it. Now, in this serious situation where the innocent Jesus was being crucified, does it really worth to write about what happened to his garments? You may feel it is strange that the Bible is writing so much in detail about that the soldiers took the four pieces of Jesus' outer garment, his tunic was seamless and woven in one piece from top to bottom, or the soldiers cast lots for it. The Bible is the very essence of God's mind and thoughts. And why is this recorded, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, in so much detail? Also, Jesus' clothes were not made of expensive materials or decorated with jewels. They were worn out and stained with dust and blood. It is also strange that the Roman soldiers divided the garment and cast lots for tunic. 
Furthermore, it is prophesied in Psalm. That was written very long time ago. Psalm 22 verse 18 says, They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. Also, today's passage says, This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled which said, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. You will hear how the prophecy was fulfilled in this message. The Bible is showing us important providence of God through the garments of Jesus. It foreshadows the history of Israel after the time of Jesus. Let us first look into the providence in the outer garment. Jesus is the Son of God and the King of Israel, the people of God. The outer garment of Jesus symbolizes the country of Israel and its people. And since this outer garment of Jesus was divided into four, the form of the garment disappeared and only the material, the cloth, remained. This stands for that the country of Israel would be destroyed and would lose its form just as the outer garment of Jesus was divided. Just as only the pieces of cloth, the material of the garment remained, only the name of Israel remained. The Roman soldiers dividing the garment symbolizes that Israel would be destroyed by the Roman Empire. The outer garment was divided into four, and this stands for that the people of Israel would be scattered into four directions to all of the world. The Jews are all over Russia and its neighboring countries, North America, Latin America, Africa, and Europe. But they did not come to Korea. Korea is also a country of one race. Jews did not come to Korea and there is God's providence here too. The history after that was certainly fulfilled that way. In Luke chapter 19 verses 43 to 44, Jesus prophesied about the city of Jerusalem. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. As prophesied by Jesus, Jerusalem was surrounded and attacked by the Roman army led by the general Titus in 70 AD. The people of Israel struggled against the Romans, but finally the city was conquered and the whole city was destroyed. As Jesus said, they will not leave one stone on another. The Roman soldiers destroyed even the stones of the temple. According to a record in history, more than a million Jews were killed and many of them were crucified while the city was conquered. Those who survived were also dispersed into four directions and since then, the Jews had to be persecuted by the Gentiles living in different places around the world. In the 2,000 years of suffering, the most tragic and ghastly incident took place during the World War II by the Nazis. Within a short period of time, more than 6 million people were killed only because they were Jews. Moreover, they were killed naked. Recently, United States attacked Iraq and almost the whole country was destroyed, but the number of deaths is only some thousands until today. But in case of Jews, their population is not very big to begin with, but still six million of them were massacred. You can see how many people were killed. Before I believed in God, I thought it was strange when I heard about the massacre of the Jews. Usually, when they execute a condemned criminal, they let him put on clean clothes 
But so many Jews were naked when they were killed. So I thought it was very strange. But after I believed in God and came to understand the providence in the cross, I understood the reason. This kind of death of the Jews was one of the curses that fell on them after they killed Jesus who came to them as their king. Although those who directly crucified Jesus or the Roman soldiers, it was the Jews who asked them to crucify Jesus. Since Judea was under the Roman rules, there had to be the permission of the governor sent by the Roman Empire to kill Jesus. Pilate, the governor of Judea, knew Jesus was innocent, so he did not want to sentence him to death. But because the Jews kept on demanding death sentence, Pilate said, I'm innocent of this man's blood, namely Jesus' blood. He said, it is your responsibility. If he said, I am innocent, was he really innocent? He was the one who had the authority to give the death sentence. And knowing that Jesus was innocent, he still gave the death sentence because of the pressure from the people. So firstly, the responsibility is on the Jews. But Pilate said, I am innocent and it is your responsibility. So we can see how miserable his death was if you go to Switzerland. He was telling the Jews to pay the price of killing an innocent person although he was the one who issued the death sentence. About this Matthew chapter 27 verse 25 says, All the people answer, Let his blood be on us and on our children. As they said, On us. So there was a great bloodshed in their generation. Jerusalem was conquered by the Roman general Titus. More than a million people were killed. Also, as they said, on our children, there were more bloodsheds for their descendants too. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue has the power of life and death. The well-being or a fall depends on your tongue. A Korean proverb says you can pay back a million dollars debt with one good word. According to the power of your tongue, you may be well off or fall, or you can be blessed or cursed, or healed, or many problems may rise. Even now, some of members when they come to receive my prayer, say like this, Senior Pastor, this pain is killing me. If you have pain, just say you have pain. Why do you have to say it is killing you? You can just say you have pain in this and that part of your body. Why do you say I'm dying or this is killing me? So you feel the pain all the more greatly. You should also speak words that are good, gentle, happy, and words of blessings that benefit others. When you speak truthful, good, and gentle words, you will receive blessings. But because you don't speak gentle words, curses follow for whatever bad words you say. Trials and sufferings will follow. So if you go into spirit, you will naturally speak gentle words. You will see and hear only good things, and you won't see or hear any bad things. You will speak good words, so you won't have any tests or trials. If anything like that comes, it is only a test for your blessings. Even the Jews received the retribution as they confessed. They were massacred, naked, during the World War II as a retribution of killing Jesus naked. As they confessed, 
Let his blood be on us and on our children. They had to live in such severe sufferings for a long time. In the Bible, we can see the price of the blood. When Cain killed his brother Abel, his blood was crying to God from the ground. There is price of blood. The history of their suffering was symbolized in the dividing of Jesus' outer garment into four pieces. Hallelujah! The Almighty God of love, lay your hand on all your children, on all GCN viewers who receive this prayer on television. Lay your hand and manifest your work that transcends time and space on every viewer who receives this prayer in faith in every corner of the world. Give each of them the faith by which they can believe and drive out all the power of negative thoughts and doubts. Drive out all trials and sufferings. Scorch by the fire of the Holy Spirit and cleanse with the blood of our Lord from head to toe, the five versera and the six entrails, each joint and all nerves, tissues and cells. Manifest the most high part of creation. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, bacteria and weaknesses go away. All contagious diseases go away. All terminal diseases, endemic diseases, and newly discovered diseases, be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit, be cleansed, be strengthened. Let there be healing of gastric cancer, lung cancer, uterine cancer, intestinal cancer, and skin cancer, age, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, heart diseases, lung diseases, all kinds of women's diseases, hypertension, hypotension, diabetes, skin diseases, and inflammation. May polio, paralysis, arthritis, and herniated disc be healed and made perfect. May the pain from lumbar, headache, and neuralgia disappear. May all after effects from a variety of accidents be cleansed and made perfect. May cold, flu, fatigue from sickness, and thyroid diseases be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and be cleansed. Epilepsy, autism, depression, nervous breakdown, and all kinds of mental diseases go away. May all darkness be driven away and let there be joy and peace in their hearts. Father God, by the most high power of creation, may all that is weak be made perfect and whole again. May all that is paralyzed become loosened and may the crippled walk and jump. May the deemed eyesight be brightened. May those with troubled hearing hear well. May the blind receive sight. May the deaf come to hear. May the mute begin to speak. Father, bless those who are unable to conceive. Rejoin broken bones and make perfect and whole all burned parts of the body. Cleanse by the fire of the Holy Spirit those who suffer from addiction of narcotics, drugs, toxicants, and poison. May the dead and dead nerves and cells revive. May all darkness be forced away and may all evil spirits be driven out. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy devil and Satan and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, go away. May all their messengers be also driven out. May all the power of darkness, evil and wicked spirits, dishonest and crafty spirits, estranging and deceiving spirits be driven out. May all chains of injustice be loosened, darkness go away. May the light come, Father God, strengthen their spirits as well as their flesh. Give them the strength to call out to you. Give them the strength to throw away their sins and become sanctified. As each of their soul gets along well, may all in life go well with them, answer the desires of their hearts, imploration and prayer. Add faith, hope and love, and may their families also come to hear and believe in the good news. Protect them from accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead prosperous lives without hindrance. 
Protect all God's children at home, work, and business with the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit and the eyes of the Lord that are like blazing fire. Bless them whether they come in or go out, and bless them to lend to many people but borrow from no one. Give them wisdom and understanding, and allow them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give all ministers and workers of the Lord the ability to carry out the tasks you have given them. May there also be great revival at each church. Lead your children so that they may give glory to you, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do in life. Manifest your work so that their lips may testify, I have met him, I have experienced God. I have received his answers and I have received God's blessing. Father God, I thank you. May you alone receive all the glory. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.